Looks like we're going into open striking right now. We've banned out Blackguard. We're left with Grumpy, Thunderguard, and the big Great Hall. Very curious to see what map we're going to go into. Look, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to go back to Thunderguard. Thunderguard seems to be the favorite here from the community. We see uh, a Azoth, a Brand, and a Lucian coming from Frost. And TB has a Brin and a Queen Nine from Multimum and a Hattori from Mistaline on a uh, Copler. Heavy Copler. axe representation coming from the Frost side here with a Lucian to be able to add on a little bit of dexterity with our movement speed rather than the guns and guitar. So a lot of fast movement coming up from there and then hard hitters from the other two. Players. I like these legend picks. I like how we have the, uh, we've got the Hattori, which has the high movement speed. We've got the knife for the good defense. And Bryn is just kind of like a well-balanced all around, uh, you know, legend pick. It's kind of very even stat distribution. Uh, very curious to see how this plays out for both teams. Looks like they're trading rather evenly so far. Nobody's really taken too much of an advantage. We can see both the Brins have reached orange. Lucian is on his way to orange. Once again, I, it's really going... It could go either way at this point. Something that I think is interesting to consider is that the blue team's actually running with triple spear. That's something that I I, I like to consider. There's That's so many good. things to think about when it comes to 3v3. So what that provides right. for them is the opportunity to set up some really great black holes. Sare strings as well, being able to sare people back and forth. Nares in between other players to be able to juggle them Absolutely. upwards. Absolutely. I mean, with the spears, you've got those really strong auto combos. You know, a lot of true combos. Uh, you know, you got that spacing that you can use with the neutral lights. That's good for keeping uh, the, you know, the enemy spaced away from you so you don't get, you know, kind of caught. Uh, I'm interested to see how this works out for them. Looks like the blue team has taken in a two-stock lead over the red team here. and uh, But a not a very far one, as we see if TB no. and Mistline are already ready to be KO'd here, but it's looking like Lockett's struggling the most yeah. here in this Azoth, as he's already ready to lose his second stock. But there, recovery kills TB off the top. But this is something that we saw in the previous game as well. As well. Whoa, Ice Pingu just got killed really early by a Queen Ice Side Stick. Absolutely, and as you said, Lockett has been struggling for about the last minute and 30 seconds. He's been in kill percent for quite a while he's he was unable to find a weapon for quite some time he does have the bow now but it might be too late they're gonna be looking to end that stock as soon as possible queen Nye was trying to make an approach but he got hit by that bow there and he's really having a hard time finding any kill moves i mean we're racking up a ton of damage here but no knockouts just yet yeah, Lucian holding onto the left side of that stage, fighting against Multimum's Queen Nye, hits him with that recovery, putting him towards kill percent here. We've got Azoth finally losing that stock off the top to a downlight from TB's axe, and oh no, he stares his teammate to death. He kind of they, almost evens it up, but they're they're like doing an impromptu black hole between players here. Like that's pretty teams. that's pretty legit, bro. I mean, the blue team does have a stock lead, but it's not a massive one. If they can take out TB, they can even up the match. That Vittori does have a basically Ooh. fresh stock though, and we're seeing. Some some really good plays come out from the Atori. Um, instead of like blindly aggressing, he's playing very, very patiently. He's waiting for these um, setups to catch down lights and oh. rack up the damage with the recoveries. Very good play coming from the blue team. And then TP side sigging his opponent towards Maltum so that he can hit him with a spear nair to be able to confirm that combo. Whether or not that was accidental, still. We've got Ice Pingo though nearly losing that stock. There he goes. It's gone. And we've got two stocks to five once again in this 3v3 setup here. So I'd, I'd this like up. to think, I'd like to think in a tournament with a prize pool like this, everything we see today is probably on purpose. <laughs> we'll unless, go, it's a, well, unless it's a Z. Unless it's a Z, well that, well, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll take that. So We're we gonna give everybody credit. Oh, he actually runs into that end wow. zone. So the red team actually took a good job of ending some stocks before they lose their own. They Lock do it. have an opportunity here. I mean, it's gonna be really rough. Ooh, oh, but that might have ended it. the game for them. Now it's a 3v1 and he is in kill percent. He's gonna have to play flawlessly. I don't think that's possible. The neutral stick from the Nye is gonna secure game wins. one for the blue team. And we saw immediately when they got into the 3v1 situation, they were just kind of like, all right, everybody spread out. Let's start spamming signatures. One of them's going to hit. And that's exactly what we saw happen there at the end of the I game. Feel like, I feel like Cope Blur really had um, a good strategy there. Like like we're seeing with these 3v3 matches, we're seeing not only like legend pick meta as far as like having a, you know, a character with high defense, a character with like high mobility, and a character with just like, you know, very balanced stats. You can see just by their play styles that I feel like Everybody must have been practicing like crazy over these last week or two because it's just beautiful. Like the synergy is nice. Well, and something to mention is that I, I've never actually taken the time because there's there have not been very many three v three events ever. Actually. Not really. Now, I now mean, I there, there's it. been a few back in the day, and I, I know I think Foda probably hosted a three v three before. I know there was some three v threes before us, but nothing of this caliber. Yeah, and and something to consider is that it actually really changes. Like I. 
it, it really adds a whole other layer to the team play in this game. I think there's a lot of 2v2s that I've seen and watched and, and participated in where it just kind of feels like it's two players separating into 1v1s. But I really do actually feel like you're working as a team to be able to fight out and, against and the other players. In a 3v3, there's much more team There, there are so going many on. things that are going on because you can have that one person that's like there to take hits, that's there to save the other people. You can have that one person that's there to execute, the other person to put on DPS. Like, there's so many different roles that Absolutely. suddenly come out from having a 3v3 being possible. Like, and, I want... I want to compare it to a MOBA, like just like the team builds. Like there's actually team composition in this game mode, I feel like, yeah. which is really, really cool because you then, don't usually see that. And then when it comes in the game too, it's such a, a, a bigger dynamic because you realize that the two players that they're putting in, they're keeping one out. Like right here, we see they're leaving Multimum out for the 1v1 if they lose out on this 2v2 here. Right. So we're seeing a uh, Shark Thatch from Frost and also an Azoth and uh, Kotler is going to be rocking a Brynn and Hattori. we got TB and Misaligned versus uh, Chris and Locket. Uh, right now Locket is taking the brunt of the damage. He has found himself in orange already and on the side of the map. He's even taking team damage. It's not looking very good so far for Locket. We've been seeing Locket struggle so far this entire set. He's kind of been on the end of things. Oh that gosh. gravy cancel side stick from Mistaline is gonna kill. They're looking to take a two stock lead here if they can close out this stock on Thatch and Mistaline is looking to make that happen. But he does manage to come back to center stage and that was a good decision because he might be able to hold on to the stock longer. Just kidding, he runs into that neutral signature. They have a clean two-stock lead And what over we're seeing Frost. is that, like, every time Malt or Mistline or TB land a combo with their spear Ooh. or sword, it's comboing into the other opponent as they're trying to save them. Yeah. yeah, TB loses out on that stock here, but they've already got a stock lead over their opponents, and they're sending them in the orange. Mistline being put in the orange himself, but he's finding some damage with these spike balls there, Spark. Yeah, I mean, they... they while the red team was at a deficit and they still kind of are, they did manage to take that stock from TV, TV rather quick. If they can close out missed lines, they might be able to even up the damage, but it's not looking good for Lockett right now. Lockett's been getting brutally Ooh. punished both of these games so far. He's really struggling. It's kind of sad to see. And then it looks like this thatch is getting brought into kill percent as the well. The mine came so close to KOing his own opponent, so was the bomb, but yeah, that was it. Oh. Nice. Oh, nice! That was Wait. a nice place. Oh, Actually, TV. no, that was a that TV was a team killed. Yeah, that was a nice place team killed there from TV. I guess. I but, thought uh, the thatch did it. Yeah, but uh, no. TB getting credit for that. Nice nair coming up from Lockett. A good GC downlight to be able to put him in position for another nair. They're trying to kill TB off the top here to make it even. And that side oh, wow. does they it. did manage to do that. So the stocks are even now. They're at a huge damage deficit. But he does have the guns. We know how strong they are at racking up the damage. Just a few bread and butter combos. He might be able to even this up. But that nair is going to kill. And now Lockett is looking to get abused. He's trying to space them out. He's doing a good job so far. But we've seen he's been struggling. And he yeah. is being brought into the orange. He was struggling to 3v3 as well he was kind of the opponent that was just losing his stocks and taking too much damage too quickly without being able to bring anything back and we're seeing that happen in this game as well but he's got an opportunity for a gimp here the bow oh, no, says with that ground over pound for you tb with a nice ground pound is gonna secure that kill and now it's just down to chris and chris has found himself in kill percent and on the edge of the map looking to get edge guarded tp with another nice place ground pound is gonna take game two for coat below